For a super long time now, video games and food have had some collaborations together, which makes for some amazing promotional items. Like some of these items just hit the soul with the biggest nostalgic wave out there, and you just want a taste of what once was, or you could even literally taste it. Like if you see a picture of an old, you know, Pokemon Pop-Tart, which I'm gonna get to later in the video, you could taste that Pokemon Pop-Tart. I'm gonna start off with probably my favorite on this entire list, and that is the Halo 3 collaboration with Mountain Dew. I'm doing a giveaway at 12,000 subscribers for a $20 Nintendo eShop gift card, so all you have to do to enter that giveaway is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment letting me know you want to be in the giveaway. This one to me is extremely nostalgic. I think Halo 3 in general just screams, you know, 2007 or whenever the game came out, mid-2000s, and the collaborations for Halo 3 were just all, as a whole, super cool. And even before this, I'll just quickly pop this in there, Microsoft did a Mountain Dew limited edition original Xbox console back in the day, which is super cool. It's, it's really limited. The Mountain Dew Halo 3 collaboration was around the launch of the game in 2007, and it was basically called Mountain Dew Game Fuel, and it's just a new flavor of Mountain Dew, which is like a citrusy, cherry-ish type of flavor. And it has some amazing packaging. The The artwork on this is so awesome. And I wish I had a bottle or a can of this now. And I'm pretty sure I had some as a kid. I was only about five years old when this came out. So I was too young to even care. I saw Mountain Dew. I drank it. And I threw the can away. But yeah, I, I wish I had some type of promotional Halo 3 Mountain Dew item. Some of these actually go for crazy money. People still have sealed cans. And no shock. They actually still sell for a ton of money on eBay and stuff like that. You know, this was obviously a huge success for Xbox and even Mountain Dew. Because to this day, people still talk about this a lot. This is still one of the biggest and coolest collaborations between a video game and food, in my opinion. And it didn't even go that far. Like, they even went to other foods. I'm pretty sure Doritos had some Halo 3 collaborations. There was even a Slurpee Cup Halo 3. There's actually several different Halo-themed, like, Slurpee Cups from 7-Eleven that... You, it's gonna blow your mind. These plastic cups will sell for like $40 and up on eBay. It's crazy. They're super collectible. Every time I go to the thrift store, I look for one of these Slurpee cups. I've never been able to find one. They also did do this for Halo 4 and I think Halo Reach, maybe, but definitely Halo 4. And, you know, it didn't hit the same. The Halo 4 one is still cool and all. But Halo 4 wasn't as good of a game as Halo 3. Halo 4 is okay, but... And I promise the other food collaborations I'll talk about probably won't take as long as this one. This one, to me, is just the coolest one. Next up, we got the Pokemon Pop-Tarts. Now, I wasn't alive yet when these came out, because I'm pretty sure these were released around... 1999 through 2001 with different, you know, various types of Pokemon or flavors. So they were limited edition toaster, pop tart, whatever from the early 2000s, late 90s, produced by Kellogg's because you know they because they obviously make pop tarts. And there were 12 different pastries in a wild cherry flavor topped with a yellow Pikachu frosting, sprinkles in the shape of Pikachu, Charmander. Poliwrath and Chansey, which I feel like that's kind of an interesting group of Pokemon. You know, I understand Pikachu, I understand Charmander, but why Poliwrath and Chansey? Why not, you know, Bulbasaur and Squirtle? You know, I, I wonder why. Apparently, this box also came with a figure of one of those Pokemon, which is so cool. And then they also did another collaboration, the same exact thing, for Generation 2. Now this one actually was a little different. This one had blue frosting with Pokeball sprinkles and the flavor was Pokey Berry. These were also produced to kind of promote the movie um, Spell of Unknown. And in each one of the boxes, you will get one of three different Pokemon metallic battle figures. So that's just so cool because not only are you getting these limited edition flavors with these Pokemon Pop-Tarts, but you're getting some little collectible items here. I'm sure some of you are going to see these Pokemon Pop-Tarts in this video and be like, that's, I, I missed that. I wasn't alive. I was born a year later. I was born in 2002. You know, a little bit of Fandora's lore going on right now. So the next one may possibly be one of the first, if not the first, video game food promotion and that is the Nintendo Serial System. So this was released in 1988. So a lot of you watching this video probably were not alive. But basically it was a box of cereal with two separate bags. One being themed for Mario and the other being themed for Zelda. So obviously in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s and stuff like that. Zelda and Mario were huge. And Nintendo obviously wanted to expand their reach. Reach more markets and all that. 
but this is kind of fun. This, is, this to me is like a game, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is super neat. And apparently the, the shapes of the cereal were actually shaped like Mario and Link, which, which seems really, really cool. This was also discontinued pretty quick after its release, after a few years, just because, um... I guess it just wasn't successful after the several years it was out, which I think a few years is, is a pretty long lifespan for something like this. But now this is like a collector's item because this is one of those original Nintendo promotional items that you just can't get nowadays. They still obviously do food collabs like I'll get to the next one right now. The, the Super Mario cereal box, whatever. This one was released a couple of years ago. This was huge when it first came out. But there's just something about the 80s cereal box that's just pretty special. I unfortunately never got one of these, I don't know why, I just didn't care, I guess, back then. But this is super cool, and I don't think these are worth a ton necessarily nowadays, because people have a different mindset now where they collect things purposely for the future, whereas back then, people weren't really like buying a cereal box to collect, you know what I mean? Next up, we got another Nintendo-related one. So this one is really neat, actually. This is a Fruit by the Foot wrapper with N64 game tips. You unravel your Fruit by the Foot, and underneath, like on the, the paper part of the fruit by the foot, whatever you would call that, there were 90 different tips in total for different games that are on the N64, and this was used to just promote the games. I think this is super neat, and stuff like this is just kind of like special, you know what I mean? It's just like, I know back then it was different, because when stuff is released in the moment, it's never as special, but as time passes and you look back on things like this, like this is really cool and unique. I don't know if fruit by the foot has done anything like this in the past several years, but I think it's just super cool. And if I were a kid growing up with the N64, I think I would have loved this idea of just these little tips and tricks with my little snack, you know what I'm saying? There's also a Pokemon N64 Fruit by the Foot wrapper. I can't find any information about it online though. I don't know why. I keep looking. I can't find anything other than this one solid picture, but the picture looks awesome. You know, as I say, the late 90s, early 2000s graphics for Pokemon is just some of the best. The last one on my list was actually a meme a few years ago. It was like, what are you thinking about? I'm thinking about the KFC freaking Guitar Hero collaboration special edition box. This thing looks so cool. I think the box art is just the coolest thing about it, but not only that, this thing was $7. In 2024, this would be like a $14 meal. I mean, you get a huge drink, you get some chicken, looks like some mac and cheese, a biscuit, some potato fries, like a little sandwich or something like that. This thing just looks insanely good. And I think if, I mean, I was alive when this came out. This was 2009, I think. So I would have been old enough to get this. But once again, was I old enough to care? No. Was I old enough to probably even be aware of it? Probably not. But obviously, like all video game and food collaborations, it's just to promote both items. The food companies get more sales because people see their favorite video game on some food, and then obviously, vice versa. You know, people are gonna buy the video game because of the food. But not only that, there was actually a special edition guitar that I believe was just like a limited sweepstakes thing, like you had to be selected to, to get this guitar, which I can't find a picture of, I don't know why, I keep looking up different different keywords, and I can't find a picture of this thing anywhere. You could also get in-game items, like you can get a code to get stuff in-game on Guitar Hero World Tour, which is a great game, by the way. If you're going on in the future, I think I'm going to try to make less videos, but higher quality. I'm thinking about lowering my upload schedule to like about once, maybe twice a week, but just having better videos. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.